Hey kids, it's Mr. Castellano. Welcome to How to Write the New ACT Essay. The new essay starting September 2015. It's a little harder, but a little easier too. Yeah! My name is Mr. Castellano. You can email me at the email below. And while I'm not famous, go ahead and text me. I'm lonely. Alright, here we go. Bang. What the heck, man? This ain't working. Bang. Oh, there you go. My credentials. Okay, before you listen to me, listen to my credentials. Just so you have an idea that I know what I'm talking about. I'm currently ranked as the number one writer to... Eh. Whatever. I'm going to keep recording. I'm currently ranked as the number one writing tutor in New York City, according to Yelp. Yeah. It all started in May 1994. I scored in the 50th percentile of the SAT verbal section. Yeah. But then I wisened up. 20 years later, I took the SAT again, and I scored in the 99th percentile of the SAT writing section before they got rid of it. But that's another story. Anyway, I've been teaching for almost 15 years. I've taught English classes and SAT prep in Hogwans, Korean after-school centers across New York City and Long Island. And I am regarded as a highly effective English teacher and English tutor by many, except for my boss. But it's okay. I'm going to be just fine. I don't need her to accept me. And uh, you can go on to MrCostellano.com for more of my credentials if you're skeptical. Okay, before we go on with the essay, the actual ACT essay, let me go over the writing process. As if you didn't learn this in 6th grade. Many of you probably haven't. But here's the method on how to write. You're given a prompt. First step, think. Think about what you're going to write. Don't just put the pen to the paper and start writing. Think for a few seconds. What are you going to write? And then you outline. You plan it. And then, after you plan it, you draft. You write. Going back to planning, I have a favorite saying. It's called, it says, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, you think, you plan what you're going to write, then you write it, and then you look over it, and you edit, and revise it, and then... If there's time, you write it again. And if you have more time, like those essays that you have three to four days to write from your English teacher, you go back to step three, you draft it, you revise it, all the way until it's good enough to publish. Okay, now for the new SAT essay, excuse me, ACT essay. Well, what the heck, the SAT and the ACT essay are going to be practically the same anyway. But the ACT essay, you have 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes to read the prompt and write the essay. Okay, so this is how you divide the 30 minutes. Usually you should spend about a minute thinking. This is the Kaplan rule. This is not my rule, but this is what I remember Kaplan saying when I read it at a hogwan. Um, my wife just got in the room. I lost my train of thought. See, that's why you always do your work. <sighs> All right, moving on. 30 minutes to write. Spend a minute thinking, 3 minutes to outline, 25 minutes of writing, and 2 minutes to review. Now, one thing I should know is graders understand that you are writing a first draft, so they don't expect it to be perfect. But you should try to be as perfect as, pos as, perfect as possible. This is just a guideline from Kaplan. I don't follow it to a T. Everybody's going to be different. I usually take about... 10 seconds to 20 seconds to think. And then my outline usually takes a little longer, like 4 or 5 minutes. But once I get that done, it's just a breeze. 25 minutes of writing. Sometimes after using the first 5 minutes to outline, I use up all 25 minutes to writing. And I will finish as time expires. I took the SAT last in May 2014. And, uh, yeah, I wrote the last word just before the proctor ended it, and I got a 10 out of 12. Why didn't I get a 12 out of 12? Because it's practically impossible to get 12 out of 12 on these standardized test essays. Okay, there's the story of a woman 
I read in a book called The Perfect Score by Debbie Stein. Anyway, there's a story of a woman who actually wrote an article that was featured in the SAT. And that writer took the SAT and she got a 10 out of 12. Okay, so I'm in good company anyway. But that's how you write uh, any essay. Brainstorm, outline, write it, revise it. And if you have time, you write it over again. Now, the best way to go over this new ACT essay is to review or well, to compare it to the old ACT essay. That's pre-September 2015. Okay, this was the old ACT essay. It's a topic, it was on a topic that was usually education related. And here's a condensed essay example. They would ask a question like, should schools require uniforms for students? Yes or no? Explain. Take a side or create an alternative solution. Okay, so you can see you have one of two choices. Yes, should schools require uni uniforms? Yes or no? Write about it. Talk about why you're right. And you should also acknowledge the other side and talk about why it's wrong. Now, this is the new ACT essay. It's not strictly it's not strictly education related. It's going to be on a popular controversial topic. And here's uh, an example from the official ACT gods, uh, whoever. All right, this is what they put out. And this is condensed. It's not word for word in a layman's terms. This is what is asked. Is the use of technology to replace human employees good or bad? Here are three sides. A Using technology to replace human employees robs us of necessary human interaction. B. Using technology to replace human employees can make our society run more efficiently. Or C. Society and technology can coexist and thrive together. Choose a stance and explain why it is better than the other two alternatives. So, what's the difference? Before, you had a choice of two sides. Yes or no, or you can create a third side. You know, hardly anybody ever did that. But the main thing is, before you were asked to choose from two sides. This time, in the new and improved ACT, you are asked to choose one of three options. So, what's... The difference, two sides, three sides. This is how your outline would change now. Bang, yeah. The intro is still the same, but different. Okay, here's the new intro. Like the old ACTSA, you would state the problem. I'm going to go into this more in details later. Well, I just outlined. Look, this is the problem. There's a tech debate. Okay, then... Instead of explaining one side now, you have to acknowledge the other two sides. In my essay example, I said these are the other two sides. One side is pro-technology, the other side is pro-human, and then I'll, you should save your thesis for either the last sentence in the first paragraph or the first sentence in the second body paragraph. Excuse me, or the first sentence in the body paragraph section. <coughs> so... My thesis is, I'm going to say that technology can benefit humans, but we should be warm. Okay? You can pause the screen if you want. These are just notes that I jotted down. And uh, usually when I take my notes, it's not going to be this conclusive. But I'm going to go into this in detail later. But this is how it's going to be structured. Okay? You have your intro. In your body paragraphs, you're going to have to cite counterpoint number one. This is one side you didn't choose. Talk about why it's wrong and talk about why you're right. Then you're going to have to acknowledge the other counterpoint. Because remember, there's three points. You're going to agree with one. You're going to disagree with two. But now you have to talk about why you disagree with the other two sides instead of just why you disagree with the other side. Okay? So here's counterpoint number two. And then after you're done with your counterpoints, you get to start with your points or claim. All right? This is why I'm right. This is what I'm right, and this is the conclusion. And the conclusion is the same for basically every essay. Restate the thesis, summarize, and at the end, you like to call to action. Once again, I'll go into detail later. You can pause the screen if you like. You can just read the ideas that I have on the outline, uh, or you can move on. Okay, but just to review, this is what you need to get a decent grade on the ACT essay. An introduction, 
four body paragraphs, two that acknowledge the counterpoint, and two which show why you're right, and a conclusion. Count it. Six paragraphs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Moving on. Bang. Let's go over how to write the introduction to the new ACT essay. Okay, you'd like to begin usually by discussing the problem. There's a tech debate. Yay. Then you can use a hook to start your essay. I like to choose from one of three hooks. There's the direct statement hook, which is, this is what I believe, and I'll read it. While it is said that many services that were once provided by people are being rapidly replaced by machines, we must all acknowledge that change is a part of our growth as a society and adapt to it. Oh. All right, so that's one direct statement that's pro-technology. Or you can start with an anecdote. You can start with a personal story, which you're going to use to prove a point. Here's an anecdote which you could use if uh, you decided to go pro-people, which is you were going to argue that technology shouldn't be used to replace human employees. My father was replaced by a machine. Dot, dot, dot. Then you can go over why it isn't right, and your father was a great worker, and technology is replacing people, but they'll never replace the uh, you know, the soul of people in the workplace. I don't know, like this person's father who was replaced by a machine. Anyway, an anecdote is a short story that's used to prove a point. So you can start with a short story and then get into your thesis if your thesis is um, that technology shouldn't be overused to replace human employees. Or you can start with a question. I'm not too... I'm not that big of a fan of starting with a question because I think it's kind of a cliche but it does have its place. I do use some questions during in my essay as you'll see later on but here's a question. Does the replacement of human employees with machines bode well for the future of our society? Dun dun dun. Then you explore the three sides and at the end usually pick one. So start with a question. You could you could uh, start you know you can uh, you can use a combination of all these three, okay? You can you can go with an anecdote. I'll give you an example off the cuff right here. Uh, my father was replaced by a machine. Uh, he was a great worker in GM, and twenty after 25 years of service, he was unceremoni unceremoniously uh, laid off. GM's now make up something. GM stock has gone down, you know, the last 10 years. It hasn't, but just make it up uh, because they've been pro-technological. What they didn't realize is that um, is that technology can't replace the blood, sweat, and tears and intelligence of some people. And uh, that was my direct statement. And uh, oh, I, I, I can end the question. Um, would society is society really benefiting from the the technological the our technological boom? There you go. Anyway, that was just an example of using all three hooks. But the point is, choose a hook. Start your essay. Use a technique. Graders want to see that you're aware of techniques in starting an essay, uh, whether it's an anecdote, whether it's rhetorical questions, or whether, uh, you know, I'm, there's nothing wrong with getting direct, right? Some, some graders want that direct statement, okay? But getting back to the whole introduction, start with a hook, then you would want to explain the two options that you disagree with. So, for example, I would disagree with those who are pro-technology. I would disagree with those who are pro-human. And I would get to my thesis, which is uh, says that while technology can make our society more productive, we must be wary of replacing all services currently provided by humans with services that can now be provided by technology. And already I'm thinking, this is probably going to be on my outline, would you replace your doctor with WebMD.com? Okay, so as I write the introduction outline to my essay, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to put on the outline. All right, like, uh, think about it. Just to review 
my thesis is going to be, I believe I'm choosing the, what option, if I go back over here. There, I'm choosing the third option, that society and technology can coexist together. Okay, so let me give you a sample outline of the essay I am about to write. Hmm. Bang. Outlining the body of the new SAT, ACT essay. This is so boring. You know, this is what I do as a teacher and a tutor. I know that sometimes work, work, work gets tedious and you get bored out of your mind. So you need a break. So let me just take a 10 second break over here. <laughs> All right, moving on. Outline the body of the ACT, ACT essay. Like I said, if you want to get a good grade, you should have four body paragraphs. One counterpoint. This is the one side that you didn't choose. Tell me why that side is wrong. Tell me why you're right. Counterpoint number two. This is the other side you didn't choose. Tell me why this side is wrong and why you're right. Then you get to your points. This is why I'm right. Point two. This is why I'm right. Okay. In detail... Bang! The new ACT essay body paragraph number one, your first counterclaim paragraph. You're going to explain why you didn't choose one specific option. And there's a formula. Okay, look at the red writing. A, B, C, D. A, this is the other side. This is what the other side says. This is why the other side is wrong. This is why I'm right. A, state the counterclaim. Some people believe that technology reduces the quality of our lives. I wouldn't write this in, but just so you know, that's the pro-human side. Explain the counterclaim. They, that's the some people, or I like to say proponents of technology. Ooh, that's a good vocabulary. Proponents. Proponents. The opposite of opponent. If an opponent is against you, a proponent... Oh, God, what am I saying? Opponents of technology. Moving on. Complain that innovation and technology has led to the disintegration of the relationships we once held dear. Purists complain about how big business technology has destroyed mom and pop businesses and how smartphones and social media have reduced meaningful human interaction. Notice, I don't agree with this side. I'm just explaining what the counterclaim says. All right? Then I'm going to kill it. Refute. Prove the counterclaim wrong. But change is a part of life. Then I'm going to explain why I'm right. Would these peers prefer that society revert back to life before cars, airplanes, and computers? While technology has inconvenienced members of society at times, in general, it has made our lives easier and has brought people closer together. Technology has created jobs, drivers and pilots, civil engineers and computer engineers. Okay, this is, look, this is just an outline. So you know that I'm going to deck this up with fancy wording, but here's the point. I have the formula down for the first counterclaim paragraph. All right? And here's the formula. Bang. Here's the counterpoint. Here's what they believe. Here's why they're wrong. Here's why I'm right. Okay? Pause it. Look at it if you want to. Bang. Let's take a break now so that I can explain how to add some pizzazz to your writing. All right? What is pizzazz? Pizzazz is like, yeah, you're going to add some town funk to your writing and make it groovy. What's pizzazz? Look, notice, I threw a rhyme in there. Alright? They complain that innovation and in technology has led to the disintegration of the relationships we once held dear. Sounding like Johnny Cochran up in my essay. Yeah, if you don't know who Johnny Cochran is, you better Google him. Notice my tone. Purists complain about how big business technology has destroyed mom and pop businesses and how smartphones and social media have reduced meaningful human interaction. Look at the word choice. Purists. In other words, I'm insulting those who 
uh, disagree with the use of technology. I'm calling them purists, as if they're oh, so pure they they're like I don't know they they want to keep things the same, traditionalists, whatever you want to call them. Um, I put the word I put the phrase "mom and pop stores" in quotes because that's what they used to call the stores. Um, that were run by families. All right, you want to know an example of a mom and pop store? Um, look at a small store in your neighborhood that's owned by a family. All right, that's a mom and pop store. You know what destroyed those stores? Walmart. Okay, mom and pop store used to sell used to sell stationery. Now Walmart put them out of business. Now you can buy stationery and everything else. Guns at Walmart. Okay. By the way, just because I said guns doesn't mean I'm pro gun. Okay. <sighs> Oh my God, you're probably not gonna hire me anymore. It's all right. I got enough people. All right, C, very sentence length. Okay, notice I use a short sentence to use for effect. Change is a part of life. This is juxtaposed. That's right. It's combined with a long sentence. While technology has inconvenienced members of society at times, in general, it has made our lives easier and it has brought people closer together. Okay, so use a combination of different sentences in your essay. Okay. Writing an essay is like creating a painting. You have short sentences, you have long sentences, you throw in dashes, you throw in colons and semicolons and quotes, okay? Writing is an art, an art that you should perfect, or just do the best you can, it's good enough. Okay, or you can use a rhetorical question. Would these purists prefer that society revert back to life before cars, airplanes, and computers? Let me explain to you what a rhetorical question is. Rhetoric is a style of arguing. A question is a question. Have you ever asked a question in an argument that you didn't really need an answer to? You just used that question for effect? Like, uh, say, you were out late partying last night and your mom wants to know why. You can answer her with a question like, you know, why am I out partying last night, Mom? Why you gotta ask me those questions? Do I ask you about what you did the night before when you come home at 3 a.m.? You probably get slapped. But that is a rhetorical question because you don't expect her to answer that question. You're just using that question to make an argument. All right? So, that's my rhetorical question. Would these peers prefer that society revert back to life before cars, airplanes, and computers? The obvious answer is no. You're insulting these people and saying that, yeah, they're, they're anti-technology, but these are the same people who are probably on their iPhone. I'd probably uh, add that sentence to my essay. Okay, but moving on. So that's how you add some pizzazz to your writing. Uh, I'll go over this a little bit more later, but let's move on to the second counterclaim paragraph. Once again, same formula, all right? This is like fast food, man. You don't have to have like the greatest essay. Just have what the grader is looking for. This is the other side. This is the second side. This is what the other side says. This is why the other side is wrong, and this is why I'm right. Okay, so I uh, refuted the pro human side, now I'm going to refute the pro-technology side. Those are the people who wholeheartedly agree that technology should always be used to replace humans. Okay? Say the counterclaim. On the other side of the debate about the use of technology to replace humans lies those who feel that whoever can be replaced with technology must be replaced. And as soon as possible. Just to give you an example. You're not going to write this, but that's the pro-technology side. I'm going to explain what I mean. Some are all for the life led by the Jetsons. I grew up in the 80s, so the Jetsons, if you don't know, the it's a futuristic cartoon. It's a cartoon show that takes place in the future. All right? They, that's the some people, the pro-technology people, they are in favor of education through Grand Canyon University, socializing through Instagram, and shopping through Amazon. Oh, God. I messed up. There's no parallelism over here. It's supposed to be they're in favor of learning through Grand Canyon University, socializing through Instagram, and shopping through Amazon. Notice, when you make a list, it has to be the same form. Ing, ing, ing. I messed up. Education, ing, ing. 
So it should be in favor of learning through Grand Canyon University, socializing through Instagram, and shopping through Amazon. There, you got a bonus grammar lesson from me. Okay, I'm going to create a course one day on uh, grammar, but moving on. This is why those people are wrong. By the way, Grand Canyon University, that's an... Uh, that's a famous internet college. If you want to learn and just strictly learn online, go to Grand Canyon University. Okay. Now, why are these people wrong? Refute. However, technology must not be used to replace all human interaction. Ooh, really? What do I mean? Let me support my point using specific evidence and details. While I used Khan Academy, this is a lie, by the way, but they can't tell. While I used Khan Academy to study for this exam, I still required the help of a human teacher to explain concepts to me that the program could not. I still needed the emotional support of educators and live friends who could tell me when I was stressed out and who would tell me and who would tell me to relax, rest, and rejuvenate. Yeah, look at those three R words, all right? There's poetry in my writing, damn it. And when I took breaks from studying, I still appreciated the human interactions I had with the local Starbucks baristas and salesmen and saleswomen at the mall. It's all lies and propaganda, but they don't know. I'm just using it to state my point. And my point is, some people are, uh, what happened? Oh my God. All right. Some people are pro-technology, they believe that the future is the way, you know, learn online, socialize online, shop online, but they're wrong because I required, I required, uh, I required a human tutor, I required uh, human live friends who were in front of me to tell, to, who could read my body language and tell me to relax, and I required human interaction at the mall with the Starbucks baristas. By the way, if you don't know what a barista is, that's the person who's making your coffee. Yeah, there's a word for it. You're not, they're not Starbucks coffee makers, they're Starbucks baristas. Okay, that word comes from Italy. See, if you hire me as a tutor, you get all these bonus lessons. All right, but you don't have to hire me. I'm okay, I'm alright. But if you want to, uh, hit me up. Alright, moving on. Put some mustard in your writing. You know, one of my favorite basketball players, he played in the 90s. His name was Latrell Sprewell. By the way, this is story time. I'm do doing this to give you a break. Anyway, Latrell Sprewell, he's a fiery guy. Okay? And one time, he in practice, he just passed the ball. You know, just he didn't put too much heart into it. And his coach said, come on, Latrell, put some mustard into it. What happened after that made front page news. Latrell Sprewell choked his coach, P.J. Carlissimo, which led to his being traded to the New York Knicks, which led to the Knicks making it to the finals like the next year after suspension. So I love Latrell Sprewell. But the point is, put some mustard in your writing, which means add some funk to it. Okay? Once again, I have the long sentence structure mixed in with the short sentence structure. Just look at how it goes together. In the other side of the debate about the use of technology to replace humans lies those who feel that whoever can be replaced with technology must be replaced with must be replaced and as soon as possible. Short sentence. However, technology must not be used to replace all human interaction. Yeah, you see how long and short sentences they create an effect. Use that in your writing, man or woman. Notice my tone, all right? I went over this already. I, I referenced pop culture ideas about the future. The Jetsons, future is the cartoon. Grand Canyon University, uh, Internet College, Amazon shopping, Instagram, how friends interact these days, all right? And I use specific details. Um, here's my details. One, I required a human tutor. Two, I required human friends. And three, I required a human interaction at the mall. Okay? Now, what's the next? That's uh, two body paragraphs down. I'm already half an hour into this video. Uh, you already owe me $50, but this is free. Alright, because I'm a Christian. Okay? Uh, moving on. Alright, now. The new ACT the new ACT essay body paragraph number three. Okay, this is now that you got rid of your counterclaims. 
you refuted the counterclaims, you can get to your claims, which is why you believe that what you believe is right. And remember my thesis, I'm saying that, you know, both humans and technology can thrive together. And here's point number one. We should use technology, technological innovation in occupations for what it really is, a tool that has the potential to benefit us all. Explain. While technology can continue to make our lives easier, it should not be used just because it can be used. Uh, in other words, frivolously. I'll go over that vocabulary later on. And then I'm going to cite at least two details to prove that my claim is correct. Oh no, I forgot the word over here. It's alright. At least I got this done. Nobody's perfect. Alright? You're not the joss. You're not the boss of me. You're not the judge of me. Alright, here's my point. Technology is good and bad. Point number one, Chile's rest, I read about this in the Wall Street Journal, which shows that you should read, pick up some knowledge, okay, so you have something to write about, so you have something to say. Here's my point, Chili's restaurants are currently testing their Ziosk program, an interactive computer at the table that a customer could use to order drinks and desserts without having to call the waiter. I should have put the waitress in there so the, the female graders don't get offended, but... Oh well. The tool is supposed to expedite orders and reduce the need for constant contact with servers. Number two. Having used the Ziosk last month when I went to Chili's, I found the new tool ineffective and counterproductive to the restaurant experience. My need to customize my dessert still required a human server. Point number one. Even after I ordered a soda on the machine, I felt the need for human interaction to confirm my order. That's point number two. In retrospect, I am also annoyed by my decision to spend precious time playing games available on the little computer. Yeah, this is a true story. They, they had like Scrabble and trivia and stuff on that. The purpose of the family dinner was to, was to spend time interacting with my family and the Ziosk enabled me to stray from that. Oh, what a shame. Damn that Ziosk. Okay, but you see how I'm making my point? Technology is a tool. It's good or is as good as or bad as the person using it. I didn't use it correctly. I used the Ziosk and uh, it took away from me and my family. And I also cited other cons of this new technology that, you know, I still wanted a human server and I still required that human interaction. Okay, uh, I talked about the counterclaim formula, which is over here, bong. Look, this is the counterpoint. This is what they say. This is why they're wrong. This is why I'm right. Now, I'm going to get to the claim formula over here. It's a little easier. Here, this is my claim. This is why I'm right. And let me give you more details to show why I'm right. Okay? Um, and then I get to the next claim paragraph. Here's my point number two, all right? While I found a new technological option at the restaurant to be an annoyance, I believe that new technology has its place and should be used if it can have a profound positive effect on society. Remember, I'm going with the technology is not good or bad. It's a tool, okay? So my first body, um, my first claim paragraph was about, you know, it, it's a tool, but it could be used poorly. This claim paragraph is going to be it's going to talk about how it's a tool but it could it could save lives all right literally now point number 2 um while I found a new technological option at the restaurant to be an annoyance, I believe that new technology has its place and should be used if it can have a profound positive effect on society. Here's my point. Google is currently experimenting with the technology of driverless cars. Whoa, and this is true, you know why? Because I read. All right, I read, I try to get educated, I try to learn things, and when I learn things, I know more things. Let me explain. Though the shift to driverless cars will create a dramatic shift in the automobile industry, possibly rendering thousands of workers from current car engineers to truck and taxi drivers obsolete, the change has the potential to save millions of lives since the number one cause of traffic accidents is driver error. Yeah, see, imagine it. Imagine if there were no more drivers. By the way, remember, I, this is a true story. Google has worked on this. In the future, I believe, when you who's listening to this is like 50, if you're like 15 now, or even before that, there will be driverless cars and there will be no car accidents because there will be no drivers. 
All right. In this case, we must ask the question, what is more important, saving people's jobs or saving people's lives? Well, we can always replace a job, but we can never replace a life. If a form of technology has the potential to benefit society for the greater good of most, then that form must not be explored, but exploited. Okay, look, I know I messed up over here. This is just an outline. Outline doesn't have to be perfect. And on your actual, actual outline, you can't write all this. You're going to be writing in code words. Okay, but in my outline, I just put down Google, driverless cars, abbreviated, no accidents. Okay, that was good enough. And I turned that into this. Okay, now, it's been a while. Let me teach you more on how to throw some funk into your writing. Okay, use the dash. A dash of effect, okay? Like a dash of salt, it's a dash of effect. We should see technological innovation in occupations for what it really is. Dash, a tool that has a potential to benefit us all. Notice that dash, I use that dash there to create an effect, okay, to show that what comes after the dash is important. In this case, we must ask the question, what is more important, saving people's lives or saving people, saving people's jobs or saving people's lives? I used another dash there. I probably overused the dash, but like I said, it's a first draft. Okay? The graders don't expect you to be perfect. Look, you want a perfect essay writer? Go hire James Anthony Green, okay? He's the best SAT tutor in the world. You can look him up. James Anthony Green. You can even purchase his, uh, his, his program for like $500. And you can hire him for $900 an hour. Or you can hire me. I'm cheaper, I'll tell you that. All right. I use a solid vocabulary. While technology can continue to make our lives easier, it should not be used frivolously. You know what frivolously means? That means like whatever. Okay, that means uh, used unnecessarily. The tool is supposed to expedite orders and reduce the need for constant contact with service. Expedite, what do you think that means? Think about the website Expedia. What does Expedia mean? It means it gets you there faster. Right? Expedite means makes orders fast. And check out this vocabulary. I'm not going to read this. I've read this already, but check out my vocabulary. Rendering. Obsolete. Rendering, which means... Uh, I don't know. Rendering. Possibly uh, making. There you go. Obsolete means out of date. And uh, here's another uh, vocabulary technique that I forgot to put in red. Okay, Alliteration. It's using a pattern of the same beginning sound. Okay, If a form of technology has the potential to benefit society for the greater good of most, then that form must not only be explored, but exploited. Greater good. G, g, explored, exploited. X, X. Okay, that's no accident. I know how to use language, damn it. All right, and I used alliteration, which is means you're starting with the same beginning sound to create effect, to be poetic, because you know, right? Like I said, writing is an art. You want a five or a six, your writing can't just be like bland. Like here's my argument: you gotta throw some pizzazz, you gotta throw some funk, you gotta throw some mustard into it, but don't tell that to the trails free well. Now, bang. Bonus lesson, how to improve your vocabulary. The fun way. I didn't have the greatest vocabulary. I still don't, okay? But a few years ago, when I was playing Temple Run and Granny Smith on my iPhone all day, I had a thought. I said, wait, if I'm playing these games all day, what would happen if I'd played vocabulary games all day? So I started downloading vocabulary games. And yes, I actually paid for it. Because if you want quality sometimes, you have to pay for it. So I paid $7 for an app called SAT Word Slam. You can check it out. They have a free trial on your iPhone. I paid another $7 for an app called Noji Vocabulary. And I paid $5 for an app called Mind Snacks SAT Vocabulary. Yeah, you know what? Add that up. That's like almost $20. But in the words of Chris Brown... Look at me now, okay? I'm a vocabulary genius. Well, not really, but my vocabulary has improved. All because I played games. 
And if you, and games is not your thing, you want a book, I recommend this book, Direct Hits Core Vocabulary of the SAT. Instead of having like boring vocabulary sentences, they reference pop culture like Lady Gaga and Kanye West and Taylor Swift and movies like The Avengers. It makes vocabulary fun. Okay, I had this book. I lost this book in school. Or maybe it was some good that a student stole it. But look, you want to improve your vocabulary, you got to work at it. Okay, download some apps. Read this book. Do whatever you have to do. Here's a special note. Look, the ACT and the SAT no longer test vocabulary directly. But they test it indirectly by putting sophisticated vocabulary in the reading passages and questions. Okay, test graders are also biased towards giving the higher grades to essays in which students express themselves more clearly through words. Um... In layman's terms, yeah, your your writing should be sophisticated. And sophisticated writing does have sophisticated vocabulary. So if you're going to improve your vocabulary, you have to put in an effort. Uh, I played games. It was fun. All right? Do something, man. Concluding the new ACT essay. Or pretty much every essay you write. Okay, now I'm going to get to the conclusion. Because the conclusion of this essay is the same conclusion as almost every other essay you will ever write. Okay, unless there's something I don't know. Here's how to write the conclusion of the new essay, ACT essay. One, restate your thesis. Technology is a tool that could make our lives easier. But it should not be used to replace life itself. See, that's my thesis. That's my main point. It's a tool. It can make our lives easier, but it shouldn't be used to replace life itself. Summarize your main points. It is our duty to recognize that change is a part of life, and in order to thrive in this society, we must accept change. Some changes benefit society and enable us to grow, while other changes cause us to revert back to traditional ways. Okay, we can change and try to go back to the past, or we can try and move ahead to the future. And at the end of this essay... Always call to an action. Actually, you know, I forgot to mention here. Another way to end it with your call to action, you should go back to the beginning. All right. What? Well, how did I start my essay? Oh yeah. So if you if you started with the story of your poor of your poor father who was fired, you know, you could go back to that at the end at the end and saying that, you know, um, your father was hired somewhere. Your hired your your uh, your father was hired by GM. Who was fired by GM? You know, took a job at Ford, and Ford's, Ford's stock went up because they they know that human manpower is more important than technology. But here's my call to action for my essay: We must see technology for what it is—a tool, no better and no worse than the people who control it. I stole that from the from the book Shane. All right. Notice that's another way to become a good writer. The more you read, the more you start to write. And, you're brainwashed by whatever you read. So, but let me go on. We must see technology for what it is. A tool no better and no worse than the people who control it. As long as technology is being used for the greater benefit of all, we must continue to use it to benefit all, even at the expense of the employment of some. So there you go. That's my call to action. Well, is it a call? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling people what to believe. All right, it's a tool. It's no better and no worse. And um, if we can use it to benefit everybody, we should use it, even if some people get fired. Okay? And, um... Uh... Bong. Uh, yeah, here's some general notes on organizing the new ACT essay. Alright? These are some things you should keep in mind as this lesson comes to an end. Alright, my reading specialist coach, God bless her, Dorothy Barnhouse. Shout out if you're listening. Wagwan. She says, good writing is good writing. Okay? What does she mean? Look, I know I just gave you the whole format, but here's the truth. There are no set rules on how you must structure this essay. This presentation, I have counterclaim one, counterclaim one, claim one, claim two. There's no rule that says you you, you can't go against that. I mean, you should have all four parts. You should have definitely have all four parts, but there's no rule on how the order uh, must be. All right? This structure is the easiest to remember. And follow. Okay, I like to start with the counterclaims because, you know, I don't want to forget about them later. I want to say, this is what one side believes, they're wrong. This is what the other side believes, they're wrong. This is why I'm right. One, two, bang. All right, if you're feeling lucky, you could structure your essay another way, all right? You could start with your claim. This is why I'm right. 
continue. This is why I'm right. And then go on with the counterclaims. This is why. This is what they believe. This is why they're wrong. This is what the other side believes. This is why they're wrong. Here's just a warning. Some teachers feel that it's better to end with your claims, not your counterclaims and refutations. In other words, I, I, I know some teachers that they say you should always put your counterclaims in the beginning because you don't want to end stating the other side. I mean, we know that you refuted, but you still ended stating Towards the end, you mentioned the other side, and with uh, the way this presentation is set up, y y by the time you get to claim number two, you've already forgotten what the other side believes. Okay, so I believe that makes my argument stronger. Uh, here's another way you can structure it. You can mix and match. You can say, this is what the other side believes, this is what they're wrong, then throw in a claim, and then throw in another kind of claim, and then throw in another claim. All right, this could be confusing and time-consuming. Um... Look, my advice is that I like to keep it simple. I like to do this all the time because and get my 10 and call it a day. You know, 12, I'm lucky. I don't even know if I'm going to get a 12. But like uh, this author I'm reading, James Altucher, he says all advice is autobiography. And look, this is not just a lesson for this essay, but this is a lesson for life. Every time someone tells you to do something, they're giving you advice from their point of view. Just because it worked for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Okay. Let's get to uh, how this essay is graded. In a nutshell, boom! This is not the official rubric, this is my rubric. Because I think those uh, official rubrics are so blase, blase. Whatever that phrase means, but... Look, you want to get a perfect score, this is what they want. Six, insightful answer to the question. Insightful, you have to see something that the, gra the, the graders don't see. When a grader says... Whoa, after you write an argument, that's insightful. That's why it's almost impossible to get a six. Okay? You 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 acknowledge all the points of views and you leave no stone unturned. That means you have a comprehensive argument that everything in your essay you know, that's the manual right there. Okay, that's the argument and nobody can say anything against your essay. That's how you get a perfect score. Um development, how it's organized, insightful and specific pieces of evidence for support. All right, organization. You have your intro, you have your two counterclaim paragraphs, you have your two claim paragraphs, and you have your conclusion. Um, language. It's sophisticated. It's intelligent. It's engaging. It's scholarly. The rhetoric is used, like all that mustard and funk and pizzazz that I talked about. You use that to create an engaging piece. All right, it's actually fun to read for a reader. And conventions. There's no grammatical errors. You can see based on my grammatical errors, I'm not going to get a six. Okay, uh, you can still get a perfect score with a five, though. Let me go over what a five is quickly. It's a good answer. You know, you acknowledge all points of views, solid reasoning, specific pieces of evidence. Um, it's the same setup as a six. Okay, uh, you have solid evidence. It's not the most insightful, but you know, it's solid. Uh, the language is engaging. Uh, you know, you are aware of rhetoric, and you have hardly any grammatical errors. Okay. Um, I'm going to redo this again, by the way. We're going to fix the slides, but it's better to get this done. Yeah, out of the way first, even with the errors. All right. A four. A four is what... A four is a passing grade. Okay, a six is perfect. A five is good. A four is passing. And this is all you have to do to get a four. Okay? It's an acceptable answer to the question, which means you answer the question, you know, you have a point of view, you acknowledge the other two points of views, you have reasons, or, and you have specific reasons, alright, for evidence. It might be cliche, but, you know, you have your reasons. It's organized the same way, okay? It might not be six paragraphs, but the the writer is aware that they have to include the two counterclaims, and they have to include, you know, claims, you know, maybe if you have one claim, you might still get away with a four. And um, one claim, but you still have to have the two counterclaim paragraphs. Okay, that's why I say have two claim paragraphs, so you can get a five or a six. Uh, the language is scholarly. You know, you're aware that a teacher is going to be graded, is going to be grading this, so you must write like a scholar. And the conventions, you have grammatical errors, but it doesn't get in the way of the comprehension. Okay, like in like my grammar, okay? It, it, there's errors, but you know what I'm trying to say, okay? A three is a failing grade. If you get a three in the ACT essay, it means you missed something, all right? It means your answer is probably vague. You probably didn't take all points of views into account. Um, the supporting evidence is probably too general, and your argument can't be, isn't sound enough. Like, maybe, it, 
you know how you get a three? They ask you, should technology be used to replace human employment? And you wrote an essay on, is technology good or bad? And you talked about Facebook and how it took away time at the dinner table, but you didn't address the direct question, which is human employment. All right, that's how you get a three. It's like a confusing answer. All right, organization, you have the intro. You're probably missing a counterclaim or a claim paragraph, or you know, some people, if you miss the conclusion, they might give you a three automatically. You know, graders are cruel. You don't know what they're going through. In their lives, they might take it out on you. Uh, language, it's even if it's uh, even if you have all parts, maybe if the language is difficult to read or the tone is unfitting, um, it's not a scholastic piece of writing. It's like basic junior high school writing. You'll get a three. And the conventions is the grammar is so bad that we have a hard time understanding what you're trying to say. And I'm not even gonna get into a one or a two, all right? Because if you get a two, it's basically incomplete. All right, <laughs> the tone is insulting to academia. Maybe you threw threw in the words wanna, w a n n a or gonna, in there. All right, yeah, you deserve it too if you threw in those words. All right, maybe you don't know how to capitalize names or use commas or periods. You know, I'm starting school next week. There are still ninth graders who don't know how to capitalize names or uh, the beginnings of sentences, the the the, the first letter in every sentence, and. These students be like, yeah, that's the way I write, man. It's like, you, you write incorrectly, all right? You better get it together or I'm going to keep giving you one or twos. All right, and how do you get a one? You get a wrong answer. Okay, now look, it could be the greatest essay ever written, but if it's if you write an entire essay that has nothing to do with the question, you're going to get a one, all right? If you write par one paragraph, you know, you get a one. Insulting to everyone. It's a waste of the reader's time. And basically, with grammar, you march to the beat of your own drum. Okay, you have your own code of writing. But save that code for your journal. That code has no space on the ACT. So, <clears throat> let's review how to write the new ACT essay. Alright, we've been through a lot. You know, if you want this entire file, I'll... I'll, I'll send it to you. Just uh, just email me. I'll give you my email after, and I'll send you this entire PDF. I'm also gonna send you weekly tips, as if you wanna read it. But uh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You know what? I'm not too bad. Just uh, subscribe to my newsletter. All right, let's review how to write the new ACT essay. Okay, read the question and the prompt. That way, you make sure you answer the question. Okay, not a question. You answer the specific question. Outline your outline outline the point of views and acknowledge each in your outline. So remember, when you write your outline, you should say, "This is one side, this is the other side, this is what I believe, and here's why." Okay. Three. Refute every counterclaim and be prepared to explain why your claim is correct. So remember, on the counterclaim, a lot of students when they write the counterclaim paragraph, they just say, "This is what the other side believes." Then they end it. You can't do that. You have to say, this is what the other side believes. And then you have to say, this is why they're wrong. And that's how you pick apart an argument. You're like a lawyer, basically. And that's what the Common Core wants to do. They want to turn everybody into a lawyer now. You, have to, you can't just say, this is what I believe. You have to say, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. This is what they believe. This is why they're wrong. This is why I'm right. And you have to do that two times. That's why there's two counterclaims now. Okay? Four, support two of your claims using specific details from the news, the arts, history, your personal experience, whatever. And to make sure you're answering the question directly, it's always good to go back to your thesis after each claim. That means after every body, pa after every body paragraphs in, in the middle, you should go back to the thesis or at least imply that you know what your thesis is. Okay, uh, actually, I think it's pretty elementary to always go back to your thesis, but if you're not a strong writer and or you tend to forget or you tend to go off track, you can get into the habit of going back to your thesis after each body paragraph. All right. When you close, you close with your thesis, a summary and a call to action. You tell the reader to do or believe something. Okay, that's the way to close. All right. And um, you should practice completing essays. Okay, now one of the reasons I created this is because there's not much, there's not much content on the internet today on how to write the new ACT essay, and this is uh, my gift to you. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna try to create more custom-made ACT essays, and uh, 
there if you join my email list I'll email that to you too yeah so there you email me you get these PDF files and you'll get the sample essays that I'll create look and uh, just going back to number six you have to write essays if you're gonna get a good grade okay you, you can't just turn it up the day of that's like trying to play a basketball game without practicing okay I knew a student in Brown Academy in Great Neck New York hi Miss Kim and hi Mr. Kim I'm doing well Number one writing tutor in Yelp. Holla at your boy. But, um, yeah, I met a kid. He got an 800 in writing. And I asked him, hey, how did you get an 800 in writing? You get, that means you got a perfect score in an essay. And he said, I write an essay every night. I'm like, what? He's like, I, I give myself a prompt and I write an essay every night. And every night of writing an essay f since, like, uh, third grade leads to an 800 on the AC... ACT or SAT writing section. So look, yeah, you need to practice writing. And um, well, while I'm not busy, oh man, I shouldn't. You know what? How about this? For the first ten people who subscribe to my newsletter, you can send me, take pictures, and send me your essay, pictures of your essay, and I'll tell you what I think about it. That's only the first ten, okay? Because I want to help people. Because I'm a Christian. You know, no, no insult to any other religions. You know, I uh, have much respect for uh, other religions, and uh, I'm not even Christian. I'm Catholic. But let's moving on. Same thing for me, anyway. Number seven, bring an. Here's a good tip: bring an analog watch and reset it after each section. And you remember analog watch, the circle, big hand, little hand. Be aware of the 30-minute time limit. Here's a little ACT hack: every time you start a time section on the ACT uh, every section is timed but when you start a section always put it back to 12 midnight so instead of trying to do the math saying oh you know how much time do I have where does the long hand have to be you know you always know that you start every section adjust your watch to 12 and when the section ends you'll know whether it's 1225 or 1230 okay that's probably for the SAT I don't know how yeah ACT it's all different times okay but you have my pa PDF. Watch this as long as you want. I'm probably going to perfect this and sell it. So enjoy this free while it is here now. Email me if you have any questions. More tips are on uh, MrCostello.com. Actually, that's a lie. I don't have any tips. But uh, when I get in the mood to write a blog, I'll have more tips. But check out my website anyway. I worked hard on it. MrCostello.com. Email me at mrwritingtutor at gmail.com while I don't have any friends and I'm unpopular you can text me at 646-710-0902 um, or leave me voicemail I don't know if I'm going to get it because I have Cricket Wireless which is ghetto so forgive me if I don't pick it up yeah don't get Cricket Wireless it's ghetto and um, share my work with someone in need there should be a lot of people in need of uh, ACT essay tutoring and uh, I brought it to you for an hour for free. Yeah. And once you email me, I'm adding you to my mailing list. All right. If you don't want any other emails about succeeding, succeeding English from me, just send me an email with the word unsubscribe. And we're still cool. Okay. I've been teaching in like uh, what, uh, Northeast Queens. No, Northeast Queens. That's uh, that's the good part. Um. Uh, okay, I'm just going to be quiet now. But I've been teaching in uh in Queens. All right. You know, I've been called worse things. So if you unsubscribe to my email, you know, I could take it like a man. All right. Not to say that women aren't tough because, you know, some women are tough. All right. My mom was tough. All right. Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey, whatever her name is. Uh, she's tough. Yeah, Miley Cyrus, she's tough. All right. Moving on. Good luck. And since this ain't public school... God bless. This has been How to Write the New ACT Essay, September 2015. You can see it's a little harder because instead of choosing from two options, they give you three options to choose from, but it's a little easier too because they tell you what you have to write about, and all you got to do is add that to your outline, refute it, and in the words of my students, you good. All right? See ya.